Today we've got an excellent show for you, and it's basically just news reportage. I normally offer you commentary. I'll give you some, mainly by recalling some predictions that I made earlier in 2022. The topic is Pope Francis, specifically his remarks en route back to Rome from his recent Canada trip. I waited a couple of days to report this because I wanted gloss on the story. I wanted clarification. I wanted to see if there was any development. So far, none's come. So we're going to go ahead and make the rules for retrogrades show and remarks now, today. But I mean, the long and the short of it is the Pope is readying the way for either, perhaps both, contraception in a future encyclical or maybe and a retirement and this comes in the wake of the fact that he's he's canceled an upcoming trip to Africa on account of his health he cannot make the trip we're going to cover on today's show what he says about future travel future evangelizing if that's what Francis is even doing he's saying he basically can't do it he needs to step it down or step down. Okay. Today also, before we get into anything, is the release party of Don't Go to College, my new book with my co-author, Dr. Michael Robillard, about the ills that the university has worked on Western civilization, particularly the United States of America. Don't send your kids to college. Go to Regnery Books or Amazon.com today to get your copy. It's no longer a pre-order. Don't Go to College, A Case for Revolution is the full title, and that's precisely what keeping your kids at home, homeschool them, and then don't send them to college, urge them to get married and get a trade and have big families. That's a revolution and might lead to a literal revolution sometime in the next generation. Don't go to college today. Also, remember to like this video, subscribe, click the notification bell, it's really important. It, it, leave a comment. I like cookies is good enough. <laughs> what I'm advertising today that's a new exciting product is the Saint Maker. This thing is cool. It's thick and just full of wisdom. No matter what your Catholic vocation, the Saint Maker is a one of a kind personal journal and planner to help you on your faith path. It's centered on Catholic wisdom, bimillennial Catholic wisdom, and it's backed by modern productivity science. It's a nice vergence between those two things. And there's never been a resource quite like the Saint Maker to help keep you on your way, focused, productive, and on fire for the faith. Thousands of Catholics are already on their Saint Maker journey. They're reporting amazing results. With the Saint Maker free trial offer, here on Rules for Retrogrades today, you can try it out for 90 days risk-free. If you decide it's not for you, return it. They'll restore you to your fundulation. Rules for Retrogrades listeners like you, Parish Orphans and Retrogrades, can learn more about it and can get 10% off their first Saint Maker by visiting thesaintmaker.com backslash retrogrades and using promo code retrogrades at the checkout. So, so check this out. It's a really cool system integrating our faith and productivity science. Now, now that you've been plugged, let's talk about some of the things I told you in earlier 2022, right after Christmas, New Year's. I told you in reference to the Pope's colon surgery last summer, I'm not prone to these overstatements or predictions or prophecies, but based on what we're seeing, the Pope may well be much less healthy than is being reported by the Vatican. There's reasons to believe that. I'm not going to revisit all the evidence for that, but last summer, he was in the hospital for, for over a week for what was supposed to be an outpatient surgery on his colon. They never told us exactly what the colon surgery constituted, what the ideology was. We felt like we were being given a tawdry excuse for the profundity of the operation and the length of time that it took. He also noted after he got out of the 
hospital, as he always does. He's a, he's a very angry man. I don't care who you are. You might like him, but you got to admit, Pope Francis is an angry man. He said, look, a lot of people were praying for my death. That's not true, right? That's not, that's not the accurate way to put this. But he understood that given his radical changes, given his radical shaking of the church to its core, people out there are ready for the next pope. That doesn't mean they're praying for his death. They're certainly not. But he acknowledged the profundity of his stay at the hospital. And this has happened before. It was happening lots with John Paul II, where the press would go nuts anytime he went to the hospital. Let's face it, he was a sickly guy with, with Parkinson's and whatnot. So it is a natural bit of speculation. And I told you then, I don't think Pope Francis will survive 2022. Now, in May, he's been seen in a wheelchair starting then, in May of the year, the fifth month of the year. And so people have been amping up speculation that he's going to leave. And now, after the Canada trip, two months after May, he's trying to travel intercontinentally in a wheelchair. That just doesn't work. It does not work. So he made a couple comments, and they're not necessarily at cross-purposes, but they don't seem to gel conjunctively. One would assume they're disjunctive. Either he's going to leave soon, or he's going to release an encyclical on contraception soon. Let's tend to these one at a time. We already started talking about his health. So let's finish with that before we go on to the contraception speculation. I don't think I can keep traveling with the same rhythm I used to at my age and with the limitation of this knee, he said to journalists coming back from Canada. People Magazine. Was, I think the first time Rules for Retrogrades has ever cited People Magazine. It's not a regular read of mine. It says that after a six-day visit to Canada, the 85-year-old pontiff told journalists that he may one day step down from the Vatican's top job. It is not a catastrophe to change Pope. It is not a taboo he told BBC reporters. The door to retiring is open. It's a normal option. We did a show last time on Francis's view of retirement, Benedict's. They both say it's a normal or an open option, but under different auspices, under different intricacies, right? The methodology varies and the justification theologically for a papal retirement varies. I would just say... Um, before we get to it, when he actually said, I might apply this normal open option myself, I will say this is an overstatement. It is not a normal option. That's not correct. Benedict XVI notwithstanding, it is open, but it is not a normal option. It is the unusual option. It is the seldom seen, mostly unprecedented option. Remember, some popes had retired before Benedict XVI, but none who were so able, so fit for the position, none who had been in the Roman Curia for so long, none who had been CDF. We've had retirements for largely incompetency or people feeling overwhelmed in the first weeks of the office. Benedict was different. Benedict knows where the bodies are buried, so to speak. Hopefully that's just a, an expression. Read Windswept House. And you might not think it's just an expression. Or, or Father Elijah, we're doing a reading group in that for our patrons. Become a patron today and you can still jump in that Father Elijah reading group. But the point is, Benedict knows where the bodies are buried. So his retirement hadn't, hadn't happened in 750 years anyway, under any of these different flavors of the justification and the motivation for a papal retirement. But it hasn't happened for that long, period. His is very different and altogether unprecedented because Benedict, Joseph Cardinal Ratzinger, is such an insider. Okay? So when Pope Francis says the door to retiring is open, it's a normal option. No. Mischaracterization, falsehood, like so much that spills out of this man's mouth. Then he goes on to say, but until today, I have not knocked on that door. That means he's knocking on that door today when he said this two and a half days ago. I have not felt the need, says Francis, to think about this possibility. That is not to say that in two days' time I might not, st I might not start thinking about it. Um, well, 
again, weaponized ambiguity. I, it's just habit at this point. He's saying, until today, I haven't knocked on that door, meaning I'm beginning to think about retiring right now. The man just can't help himself. Then the next second he turns around, he says, I have not felt the need to think about the possibility. That's not to say that I might not start in two days. Are you thinking about it? Because he said this two days ago. Were you thinking about it then? Or might you start in two days? That's odd. Uh, people says, looking back, back at his strenuous trip, which he described as intense, Francis provided some basic uh, context to his thoughts. I don't think I can keep traveling with the same rhythm I used to at my age and with the limitation of this knee, said Francis. I either need to save myself a little in order to continue serving the church, or I need to continue the possibility of stepping aside. Now, I wouldn't have jumped all over this if this were the first comment, the only comment, if I... I I'm not sure that the wheelchair is not related to the colon surgery still. They're, they're pinning it on a knee. All 85-year-olds have bad knees. No one is jumping up and dunking the basketball with both hands at 85. So if the knees get blown. They're weak. They're weak in the evolutionary biology of a human being. I'm not saying he doesn't have some knee pain, but there's good reason to think there's more going on with this man's health. And... That's why we've reported it as such. Okay. Now we've got loudness happening uh, outside. I'm sorry for that. Sorry about that. We always avoid this time. That's the gardeners, folks. <laughs> um, okay, let me just... Now, so there's that. That might be coming down the pike. It wouldn't surprise me if it came down the pike later today. I was honestly, between you and me, I was waiting to do this show, folks, because I thought maybe he'll get back to Rome and just drop the retirement. Yeah, he's a strategist. Yeah, he wants to destroy a little bit more of the faith of, from, of the faithful in his time in the pontificate, the throne of St. Peter. But maybe if it was a little bit more exigent than even I thought it was, he would just get back to Rome and then do it. So that's why I waited on this a little bit. But in the same interview on the way back to Rome, he, well, I'm reading from a LifeSite news article, a little, little more, you're, you're a little more used to me using uh, LifeSite's excellent reportage than People Magazine's uh, uh, petty sex speculations or whatever they do over there. The, the title is Pope Francis on the Church's Ban of Birth Control. Morality is always on a path of development. Now, that's just not true. Again, it's not a teaching. It's not magisterium. It's just not true that morality is always on a path of development. So, uh, we'll take issue with that later. Pope Francis's comments appear to lend further credence to speculation that he might soon issue an encyclical overturning the church's ban on contraception. Let me just read from the LifeSite article from a day and a half ago. No, I'm sorry, this is a little more than a day and a half ago. Um, yeah. Two and a half days ago. During his return flight from Canada on Saturday, Pope Francis replied to a question regarding the Catholic Church's prohibition on contraceptives, saying that dogma and morality are always on a path of development. Now, I didn't see him say dogma is on a path of development. Morality, in the certain sense of refinement, is technically in a, on a path of development. Let me refine what this means for you folks. All this means is, if I say no use of technology while mom and I are at the store. I say that to my kids. If they say, well, what about even the telephone? I might say, okay, well, that's not what I meant. I, we, we're, my kids don't have phones, but we'll leave one phone with you. You can use that technology. That's refinement, right? This is in, that's out. That's what's enabling these goofballs to get away with saying morality develops. That All it means is it gets refined. You can say, oh, well, moral theology and moral philosophy of the church will not change. They will just get more specific as to what's in, what's out as technology advances. Speaking to selected reporters, Francis responded to questions regarding his health, possible retirement, Germany's synodal way, and international politics. While many headlines addressed his comments hinting at possible retirement, I just mentioned a People Magazine one. I was also kind of borrowing from a Daily Wire uh, reportage on the same. His remarks on contraception passed relatively unnoticed, says LifeSite News. 
in you know he dropped all four of these big topics at once. Many Catholics, but also many theologians, think that developments are needed in the church's doctrine regarding contraceptives, said Claire John Grave of Religion News Service. Are you open and short to a reevaluation in this regard? She asked. So she made a little statement and then asked this question. Are you open and short to a reevaluation in this regard? Or does the possibility exist for a couple to consider contraceptives? Pope Francis responded by calling the question very timely. It's a timeless question. Timeless questions don't have timely answers. Timeless questions have timeless answers. Is the sky blue? That's a timely question. Not if the sky has always been blue and continues to be so. So right away, he starts playing his shell game. Very timely. He adds that, okay, now here is, in this translation by LifeSide, I missed this before, he says, quote, dogma, comma, morality, comma, is always on a path of development, but always developing in the same direction. Now, this is wrong. Dogma is a definition by the church, and you never, you very rarely see redundancy in dogma. Dogmatic definitions are usually one and done. What he meant is doctrine develops in the fashion that I described to you three minutes ago. Doctrine can only develop by refinement. No use of technology, and then the kids will... No use of technology, I might say, as I'm leaving the door with my wife. And my babysitting kid might say, well, what about... What about the telephone? Because you also told us right before you said that other thing that you want us to stay in touch with you on the phone. Okay, yes, correct. Let me refine the teaching or the doctrine for you for the next hour and a half while we're at dinner. No technology aside from use of the telephone and the TV also. That jogged my memory. TV counts as technology. Anything counts as technology. Using a spoon counts as technology, right? So refinement, yes. But that's doctrine, not dogma. Dogma doesn't get defined or refined anyway after it's already been defined. So he's already wrong. Now, he did say morality, dogma is always on a path of development, but always developing in the same direction. Now, the papal, the Pope splainers are going to take that subordinate clause, but always developing in the same direction, and they're going to say, see, the, 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 the papal spinners are going to spin this and they're going to make a big deal out of it. But look, Pope Francis always comes through in the end. He might, they might make an admission like this. Pope Francis might sound a little bit questionable at times. He likes to challenge us or whatever, whatever the Pope's planners would say. But he comes through in the end. He bangs on in the end, always developing in the same direction. So this is not the fact that Pope Francis is going to come through in the end. It's the fact that Pope Francis, following the Vatican II playbook, knows that when, let's say, he he does come out with the contraception magisterial document equivalent of Amoris Laetitia, which is on Eucharist and divorces, he knows that he has to write language that sounds like it's moving in the same direction with a loophole that's bigger, especially through expected use of future heteropraxy, like Francis's six months subsequent letter to the Argentine bishops confirming their heteropraxy. But he has to have used language vague enough to be in the same direction. So don't don't tell me, Pope Splainers in the commentary, don't tell me, oh, you missed, the, you missed the subordinate clause, but always developing in the same direction. I'm seeing it, and I'm telling you. I've done videos like 101 Outrages by Pope Francis, and in every sense, he doesn't just say, Jesus did mir- didn't do miracles. He says, basically, Jesus didn't do miracles. But then he says, you know, but, you know, the real miracle is sharing. He doesn't say the only miracle is sharing, right? So he's using vague language to say that Jesus didn't do miracles. He'll say, you know, 
LGBT is from the devil, but I'm, I'm not there to judge them. And, you know, what has he said? They don't need to change at all. So he's putting out enough language which proposes A and enough language to propose A prime such that the only way to judge this man, and it's almost 10 years later, you ought to know this, <laughs> frankly. The only way to judge this man is by the actions which follow through with either A or A prime. He told the world Cardinal Casper was out of favor and that they should never expect a document, a post synodal apostolic exhortation like Amoris Laetitia. He told us that. He said sometimes during the two synods which preceded Amoris Laetitia, hey, I'm interested in Casper. But then afterwards, he says, I'm done with him. So he says, A, he says, A prime. How do we judge Francis? Not, not like it, it'll, not an interdict. We're not in a position to judge him in that sense. But how do we judge in our mental categories? By his actions. Six months later, he says, this is the only correct interpretation. The unfaithful one. He always, almost always comes out on the side of being unfaithful. And he sticks it in the AAS. Okay? So, I don't, I don't want to have folks out there who are, are um, papal explainers <laughs> telling me I missed a spot. I didn't miss a spot. I know he concluded the sentence that way. We'll be able to judge him afterwards, as we have with all of his other outrages, by his actions. Oh, and if you want to get high and mighty with me, I, this is something that's become a real... Pope Slayers want to get high and mighty. Explain to me what we're to do with the AAS magisterial teaching that the only interpretation of Amoris Laetitia is that a non-repentant adulterer, mortal sinner, can receive the communion. Explain that to me. And then I'll shut my mouth up here, man. Come on. Get real. Get real. It's 2022. You could have got away with this stuff five years ago in 2017, maybe. I mean, I still think it's nuts. It's bananas. This kind of defense, maybe, maybe in 2018, maybe in 2019. Just not anymore, man. Please. Spare us. In a lengthy response, Francis alluded to the 5th century theologian, St. Vincent of Larians, whose famous canon has been increasingly used as the basis for modern arguments proposing development in doctrine for the theological development of a moral or, dogma moral or dogmatic issue. Francis said St. Vincent says that true doctrine, in order to go forward to develop, must not be quiet. It develops ut anis consolidetur, Dilatetur, tempore sublimetur atete. This true doctrine expands and consolidates and becomes always more solid, but always progressing. You can see why in the whole history of the church and its private theologians, whose sayings have not been magisterialized, and the, the publicly magisterialized teachings of the church, Francis would love a flowery, ultimately meaningless, florid, interpretable saying like this. True doctrine expands and consolidates, don't know what that means, and becomes always more solid, don't know what that means, but always progressing. The duty of theologians and re is research theological reflection, Francis said. You cannot do theology with a no in front of it. No murder of innocence? We can't do a theology of the commandments, then it is up to the magisterium to say, no, you've gone too far, come back. But theological development must be open, and that's what theologians are for. That's not what theologians are for. They are not there to trifle with, to experiment with, pushing the boundaries of human behavior as far as some sort of church referee will spot and restrain them from doing, call them back. That is totally wrong. That's not what theology is. It's the guided study of God. Okay. Francis also referenced the Pontifical Academy for Life's new book, over 500 pages, which proposes both contraception and artificial insemination as morally acceptable. That's the Vatican's Pontifical Academy for Life, 
recently published by the Vatican itself, Libreria Editrice Vaticana. This book is a collection of essays taken from a three-day interdisciplinary seminary sponsored by the Academy in 2021. The Pope said, on the issue of contraception, I know there's a publication out on this and other marital issues. There are the acts of a Congress, and in a Congress there are hypotheses. Then they discuss among themselves and make proposals. Francis defended the work, says LifeSite, in the seminar which prompted the book, saying the theologians involved did their duty and seeking to move forward in doctrine in an ecclesial sense. So, the news is probably expect a retirement or some sort of Franciscan, in the sense of the Pope, development on contraception that is going to Amoris Laetitia it. Um, now, I'm expecting a retirement first, but I, I'm i also expecting in this uh, synod on synodality period between now and next year, I'm also expecting f- female deacons, this is one that that's, was a pause thought right during COVID, during the Amazon Synod. That, this is very interesting. Female deacons, very pro-body, married priests in the Roman Rite. I'm, these are, according to Cardinal Brandmuller and others, in the cards for the Sancte Gallen Papacy, which is number 266, Francis's. He got the first item done, which was Amoris Laetitia, defiling the Eucharist by putting it in the hands of unrepentant remarried adulterers. That was his first goal. It was a 30-year goal, and it was Walter Casper's original proposal, which was, by the way, a translation from Eastern Orthodox sacramental theology. You dopes out there who say, oh, Francis has ruined the church. He's made it so liberal. So I'm going, especially with Amoris Laetitia. So I'm going to go Eastern Orthodox. And there are people like that out there. You're dopes. <laughs> Why? Because that plan from Cardinal Casper comes straight from the Eastern Orthodox. The Foro Interno, all of that, the internal forum, leave it to, you know, some small panel of the priest, the confessor, maybe a bishop, to discuss whether a given adulterating divorcee can defile the Eucharist by receiving it in an unrepented, unreformed state of life. That comes from Eastern Orthodox. They're also allowed to get divorces. They're also allowed to, in some senses, contracept. It's always that interno foro. So don't make a mockery of yourself by by hitting me with that. I, I, I was telling so many folks that, that were leaving the church in 16, 17, 18. Oh, I'm, I'm p- peace out, man. I'm going to go to the other sacramental Christianity. I can't take Pope Francis's liberalness. What, after Amoris Laetitia? You know, they got that directly from the Eastern Orthodox. The danger with the internet is people don't research, they don't read, they're making something of a joke of their own position by endorsing things that are the polar opposite of what they think they're endorsing. It's, it's embarrassing sometimes folks. I don't know what's going to happen. This is not um, like privately inspired prophecy or anything. I think Francis is on the way out. Let's see how quick it happens. They probably know, the, the group that gave us Francis, the Gallen group, they probably know how strong they are. Now we're in August This month will occasion yet another extraordinary consistory of cardinals in the middle of the month. And this is just, we'll all be cardinals voters in the next conclave made by Francis so he can refashion a kind of Francis too. I know you all probably know that now. But the point is, it's more likely, I think, to see a Francis retirement than another encyclical during his pontificate. It could be both or it could be the encyclical. I, I'm really, I feel quite confident now that he's on the way out. We'll see if he gets, on the, he gets out by December. And to have full disclosure, I literally thought he, his health is on the way out. So I, didn't, I wasn't expecting a retirement when I said it in early 2022. I'm not trying to hide behind that. But I'm expecting a retirement or 
declining health further and further all the way to death. So we'll see what happens. Not a prophecy, just uh, me sort of putting, putting some of the small angles together. God bless you guys. Go buy Don't Go to College Today. It's exciting. It's a release day. It's my fourth book. I'm excited. Uh, God bless you, Dr. Michael Robillard, my friend and co-author. Everyone go buy this book. It's not just for college people. It's not for tuition payers only. It's about, more than about university, it's about a case for revolution. Deus volt, people. God bless.